aging face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with just regards to Scarender. And today we're going up against, of course, Eric or Ashton Akai, a tremendous Wi Fi battler. So before you do anything else, make sure to of course check out his channel, which will be linked down below. He brings pretty much, you know, three to four Wi-Fi battles a, a, a week. I was gonna say a day, but week, not days. Uh, and a very, very potent Wi-Fi battle, very smart person, which only makes his content that much more interesting to watch because he has a lot of things going on. He does think outside the box, which only leaves him as, of course, a strong Wi-Fi battler that he is now. He is bringing out the weather team, and so do I. So he has Gigalith, the Dug Trio, Kama O, Manibus, Reuniclis, and Magnus Zone. I myself is bringing, well, for a rare occasion, actually a very high meta base team without using the OU ladder. With some success, it's not ideal, but it does have its advantages. So, Abandoned Bustle, Life Orb, Tapu, Koku, uh, Heat Rock, Torkoal, Life Orb, Victory Bell, uh, Life Orb. Mammoth Wine and uh, Poison Z <laughs> Hexorus. So, a very, very aggressive team. It's basically built around the uh, offensive pressures of actually three Pokemon being, of course, Hexorus, Bustle, and Tabakoku to be able to kind of break things apart and then eventually set up the, <laughs> the Sun and let Victor Bell wrap up. Though this game will be much different due to Gigalith because Gigalith is a very, very threatening Pokemon. So, I need to win the weather war before I can do anything else. So really, with all this said, let's go into the match. So from the get-go, I decided to lead off with the bus hole, mainly because I definitely felt that that was overall the one that could hurt him the most. And since I started off with Gigalith, I know I am in a good position. While he does get the sandstorm up, and there's really nothing I can do to kind of void that off, I still have the momentum here, and I'm gonna decide to go for an earthquake. I know. He don't want to risk a Gigalith just yet, he needs that to win this game. So he brings in his comma O, and Earthquake does actually a lot of damage. Look at this, Bustle is so big! Look at the little comma O, it's like a little, like a little dinosaur. It's so small. <laughs> anyway, uh, I will not stay in here, fearing of course this is a special set, because we talked about it so much before the game. So I'm feeling that Flamethrower is a thing here, or Clang and Scale, so I'm gonna bring Rain Bront on top of Koku. And basically, I tried to force him out because the um, Kama was actually fairly dangerous for my team, also because it just hurts like a truck. So, this flamethrower does roughly over 50%, which is super scary. So, I can only hope that he's feeling that he has to preserve it. So, I'm gonna go for Roost. Mainly because, like I said, there, there is just no way of him actually risking it. It would be kind of weird if he did. And if he had done that, he would, of course, have hurt my Tapago even further, though he would not have killed it. Have that said, you know, it was a risk on my side too, going for Roots in our attacking move. Now the Dug Trio is here, and I was debating back and forth. Do I risk my um, <laughs> Gore Heart, or do I risk my Ifrit, my Torkoal? I do decide to go for Torkoal, hoping it was over predicting, and go for Iron Head over Earthquake. If he goes for Earthquake here, I lose the Weather War. He goes for Iron Head, luckily I should definitely say. And seeing that, you know, it's very, very likely that he could go for an earthquake here and after. I'm going to sign to go to my actually my bus hole, predicting the earthquake as his double switch out actually goes to Gigalith. And um, while the sand is up, I figure the likelihood of he staying, staying in with Gigalith and actually over SM because earthquake will not KO him. And him getting up damage on me would be tremendously dangerous. So I'm going to go for superpower, hoping he doesn't switch out to Reuniclus. Except your surrender. So that happened. And yeah. This 
pretty much means that I got a massive opening because not only do I win the weather war here, but there is a very, very strong chance now that Victory Bell can become the threat I so desired. So he's gonna bring in his, of course, combo back again, and yeah, I'm not standing here. I'm pretty sure Clang Scale does KO me, so I'm gonna actually sag Ifrit here, and uh, I'm gonna say this. So, you know, I am specially defensive, so I was figuring, you know, I could probably take one and preserve Torkoal. I cannot. I cannot take one. That It's it's it's, it's dead. That's uh, that, that's awesome. I, I hate combo for that very reason alone. So anyway, I send in more care, and I'm just gonna go for a sludge bomb. Now, he will switch out and go into Manibus. I am not scared of Manibus in that fashion. I'm not predicting Brave Bird, I should say. Uh, I do get a lucky poison here, and figuring that it's very likely he would try to roost all out my son, I'm going to decide to go for growth instead because because of the poison, it's very likely now that Sludge Pump will want to kill him if I get a groove off. Now, like I said here, Eric is a smart player, which means that I kind of fear that his only play here is to stall the sun out, so I, I, I got this right, which is great, mainly because this means that I push Eric even further down the rabbit hole that is Victory Bell. Uh, so he's gonna decide to switch out and sag off his lodestone. Um, or not, not sag really, getting the immunity going as I go for a weather ball next turn and just KO it because, you know, sun boosted and, you know, 100 base of fire is definitely dangerous at plus two. So yeah, I hope they didn't break any kind of ES there. I'm sorry for the fire. <laughs> so anyway, he's gonna send in Owen Wilson. And there is nothing that Owen Wilson's can do either. He does go for a Sucker Punch here, which I actually was kind of scared of because it did a lot of damage. But I was eventually just looking into whether or not actually Reuniclus could take a damage output from me. Because that was the only thing I had in my mind. That why don't you bring in Reuniclus as, um, you know, the sand is still going strong, I was going to say. But the sun is still going strong and Sludge Bomb is a KO. That's awesome. So, anyway, so my fear was kind of realized that here comes Rheingold, which is the Reuniclus. And like I said there, I wasn't sure if I could KO. While I do go for Giga Drain, no, I do not KO. But Eric has a um, pretty tough moment here because he decided to go for Recover just in case he survived. And yeah, that did definitely backfire on him because I am able to outspeed and due to his damage he has now on him, I will be able to KO him with Giga Drain due to, of course, his play there. Though, he's not completely swept by Victory Bell, but it's pretty darn close to, but due to, of course, the sun going out, there is just one situation left, and that is the Kamo, and I can't outspeed Kamo, and Kamo with the specs has just shown time after time this game that it hurts a lot. That crit did definitely not matter. Victory Bell is as bulky as Pikachu. It's basically... It's a, it's a toothpick <laughs> when it comes to being breakable. So anyway, I'm just gonna wrap the game up here with, of course, Tapu Koku. And yeah, the reason I wanted to showcase this game is actually for another reason more than, of course, that I swept there. Because that is definitely not the reason. Though the kind of reason was gonna... I would really want to showcase that situation with... Uh, <laughs> Giggly versus Bustful, but really, uh, what I want to try to say is is basically that it is so important that we have tiers when it comes to Pokemon. As you guys saw here, I brought a much, much stronger team. Because while it could go over that, you know, Eric risked, of course, the Giggly versus the Bustful, one really has to look the overarching theme here. I mean, what did I bring that Eric brought against him? He's bringing a lower tiered Sand team with, of course, Magnus on Reuniclus and, of course, Manibus to some extent which kind of looks a little bit stronger than your Irish Pokemon. Doug Crew not as viable, really. Even even with Sand, though it does become stronger, it's still not recognized as one of those more viable Pokemon. Kamo is kind of in the middle ground. I am bringing Bustle, Tapu Koko, Mammoth Swine. Three Pokemon that are the stature of OU right now, among, of course, a lot of others. But though those Pokemon are very, very, very strong, and this is the reason it's so important before going into Wi-Fi Battle, acknowledge the tears and you know do everything you can to have an even match because it just might turn out like this you know you get the wave room 
and the design of the team does, of course, outspeed, of course, the overarching theme. While Victor Bell was my main sweeper, he was only as strong as the sun was making it to be, and clearly, the only reason I win is because of that risk, and that is not how a wife of battle should transpire. So, well, I, I take this win with a grain of salt, and really, I just want to showcase, you know, that Eric has a really strong thing going on, and this is what happens when the, the tiers are just as unbalanced as it was in this wife of battles. I'm bringing too strong of a team here, and that's just transpired as really, really ferocious downfall for Eric. So, with that said, guys, I hope you anyway enjoy my little editing there and really really check out eric's channel he is definitely one of the better wi-fi battles around don't let this game <laughs> actually judge your viewing from him mainly because i have the same kind of wi-fi bell uploaded with me against him and me not necessarily doing that well with a weaker team versus a stronger team from him and it looked pretty much the same actually <laughs> so anyway guys thank you of course so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video. Until then, of course, take care.